Hello, wives. Welcome back to the Ardent Wife podcast. We are so excited that you have decided to join us here today. So thank you so much for listening. Today, we have maybe some somewhat of a controversial, <laughs> I can't even talk, controversial topic. Um, so I'll just get into it. So today we are talking about should you in your marriage have friends of the opposite sex? No. <laughs> Done. <laughs> um, episode over. <laughs> oh. So you say no. Okay, let's pull on. Why not? Why why do you say no? Honestly, it's it's open for conversation. But for me personally, I am going to admit I am a very jealous woman. I'm very mm. jealous. It's an something the Lord is working with me on and it stems from my own insecurity. I know that now I'm 41 years old. I'm getting learning myself more and more. Um, so it just, it, it's because I'm insecure. I have issues with it. Now, my husband, on the other hand, he's a very secure man. He like, and what I say by that is he literally walks around like who did and why, and he does not care. He is completely confident in who he is. He knows who he is. And so like, we'll be at the gym and he will point out like, oh, guys are looking at you. And he's perfectly fine with that. Meanwhile, if I see somebody even do like a half a double take at my husband, like I'm ready to like cut a girl. Like I'm serious. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. And so I know that's not how I'm supposed to be walking around a God's daughter. Like I know that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and so for me, it's a no, because that brings up my own insecurities within myself. So that's mm. something that I need to work on. They, I have a good friend. Her husband has a best friend who's a, a girl. They go on trips together. She's completely fine with that. That's just not the case for me. I just don't think I, I would be. Listen, that is not the case for me either. <laughs> I would be so like, nice on the trip like, there's okay, a crowd. Like, here we go. Y'all can go to lunch, go have a cheeseburger, some chicken fingers, some chicken wings. But <laughs> overnight? Yes, yes. No. So I for me, it's a hard no. It's a yes. hard no. And that's my, I know that has a lot to do with me. For someone who's listening, they might be like, yeah, my husband has girlfriend, friends who are girls. No problem. For me, it's no. I think for me, it's context, right? Like, yeah. And I think boundaries are important. Yes, right? absolutely. And so I think that that's the thing. Like, we have couples that we're close with. And I think about there's a few of my husband's really, really close friends that I could call for something, but I wouldn't, I like, it's I, when I call them, it's like, oh, I'm struggling with this. I'm having a hard time with this. Could you talk to him? Or, um, Mm. You know, something happens in our family and the person cares about us as a couple. So he's calling to see how I'm doing, mm -hmm. but it's not a long conversation. I'm not having an intimate conversation. I'm not sharing my deepest, darkest thoughts, mm -hmm. especially if I haven't shared something with my husband. Right. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I wouldn't share with another man a deep, dark thought or even a feeling or an emotion maybe that I'm going through that I haven't already shared with my husband. I don't, that just feels um, especially as women, right? This emotional intimacy and being intimate with another man emotionally beside my husband. I, I just think, and I wouldn't want my husband to do that with another woman no. either. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Tiffany, I don't even know about going out for a burger without me. I, I just, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and then like you said, Jen, about the context. So Chris, he has a friend, um, she's a female that they have been friends since um, like his, uh, their parents are best friends. So it's like they grew up together. So they're more like sisters. I mean, sisters and brother versus, you know, like friends. Right. right? right. And so I would feel comfortable with him like, hey, yeah. I'm going to meet her for lunch. like, so I think it's important to have like that context. You know, but in some other situation, if it's just like, hey, this is my coworker and we're now. For no, 
But if this is a family friend who's been around for a while, I know that like you kind of have that relationship with them too, because I feel like I was sharing the story um, of us being at a party. And this woman was saying how these women flirt with her husband. And she was like, I trust you, honey. It's the devil I don't trust. It's the enemy I don't trust. And the Bible tells us to flee from sexual immorality. And I just feel like anytime that a man and a woman is to get, you know, you're spending a lot of time together. Um, maybe you're going on lunch days, you're playing around, you're working together. Like there is just, I mean, yeah. And I mean, I also just the thought is the act, right? If you think of lustful thoughts, that's the equivalent of adultery. So putting in in that situation, but I trust, like, I trust Edward completely. That's not the case. I don't trust the rest of these people and their intentions. (laughs) Like, why would you want to be friends with them? Like have a intimate relationship with a married man like and not intimate like physically intimate emotionally intimate with a married man even if if you're married especially if you're married because that's something you should be saving for your marriage and then if you're not married and you're looking for a partner that's another thing so i just don't think that in any situation (laughs) it fits um for you to be having like sharing your deepest darkest secrets like jennifer said with a person of the opposite sex Mm -hmm. also like for me too i when I met Edward, I was an all guy friend group. Like I've always kind of gravitated towards hanging out with men because honestly, Lord, I, hopefully this doesn't sound prideful, but I make women feel insecure. Like I just don't feel very secure in women's circles. Now that I'm older, totally. I have a friend, you guys, I have actually female friends now, praise the Lord. But when I was younger, I just didn't have that. And so, but when we got together and when we got married, we were one of the first people who got married because we got married so young, those relationships, I ended, like I didn't, I no longer Mm -hmm. hung out with my, my homeboy Tay. Like he was my best friend. I I stopped hanging out with him Mm -hmm. one-on-one. Edward would be with us when we hung out, but it wouldn't be on -on one-on-one anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, now I have no desire to have relationships with men. And that's just like, not like, social relationship with men because I don't know I just I have that relationship with my husband I can have those conversations with my husband I enjoy hanging out with my husband so um yeah so from that aspect too as a woman who hangs out with guys I have no desire to do that either so yeah yeah and it just reminds me too of you know no matter how strong you think you are in the in the Paul who say something like unless you fall like you standing strong and mm-hmm. then you know so it's like for me like you were saying I don't have male friends either because I mean while I love my husband and that's never my intent but I also know that the flesh is weak yeah you know and anybody given the opportunity the space the I mean things happen you know, you make the choice. It's not like, you know, it's not like you fall into it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, these small things, small choices that you make over and over and over again. And so it's like, yeah, I don't need, no. Yeah. I think it's like, because I have staff that I work with that are my supervisees or, you know, it's been a while since I've had a male supervisor. Mm-hmm. But, um, but I have one of my full-time staff as a male, we share an office. It's just me and him in the office, you know, but it's a very professional relationship. So I think it can be done, you know what I mean? But, but we also, and we ask like, you know, he's got a girlfriend, how, you know, and he's a lot younger than me. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, trying to make sure he's loving his girlfriend, you know, but, but I think, um, that those, you have to guard your heart. You have to have good boundaries around like, you know, you know, yeah. and, and being in, in, gosh, if you're having a tough time in your marriage, especially because, right, this is in the context of us, like really wanting to have godly fearing marriages. And we're, yeah. you know, I think that if you're having a tough time in your marriage, that is a slippery slope and you yeah. can try to deceive yeah. yourself. But, you know, I think, I think that it's important and, and you really have to know how your spouse feels. It's no more longer about what you feel and what you think because you are now one with your spouse. And if something does not make your spouse feel comfortable, yeah, guess what? You got to cut it That off. is more important than what you think, whether yeah. they're right or they're wrong. It doesn't yeah. even matter. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's honoring where that person is at in the moment and, and putting 
Yeah, it's a respect thing. And mm -hmm. so I know like in my job, I've got male coworkers, male people that I supervise and you know, we might be alone for a meeting, but you know, I'm I'm mindful of that. I'm mindful of the environment, I'm mindful of how I sit, I'm mindful of what I say, especially if I'm the supervisor because I also mm -hmm. have to be careful of that power yeah. differential. So there's a lot of dynamics that come at play in it, but I think if you're really struggling in your marriage, you got to, you want to guard, you yes. want to around yes. marriage. Yes. And I agree because we're all in the fitness industry and there's, it's predominantly male in the fitness industry. So that's the case. And like when I did work at a gym, it was all, I was the only female trainer. So I, and I remember like working out with the guys after work, but it's all a good context. Again, guarding boundaries, setting up really strong boundaries, and then having those conversations with your husband like, is this okay? And I actually yeah. had, um, cause I, I disciple women in a marriage group in, no, it's a book study. And one of the women, she came to me with that. Her husband did not like, and it was a, actually a female friend. I feel like even if it's a female friend, yeah. because the female friend did not respect him and mm -hmm. she consistently was talking down to her about her husband and she's like he does not want me to continue this relationship so whether it's a female or a male if it's disrespecting your husband period yeah. that relationship needs to end um yeah. because of your reverence for your husband because yeah. of your desire to respect your husband right <clears throat> and i looked up that scripture and i'm going to read it from the amplified first corinthians Chapter 10, verse 12, therefore, let the one who thinks he stands firm, immune to temptation, being overconfident and self-righteous, take care that he does not fall into sin and condemnation. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, in this context, I believe it's talking about, you know, the relationship with God. You know, you think, hey, I'm doing all the right things. You know, I, you know, I can go out because, you know, first Corinthians is the hot mess church. <laughs> and so you think that, Hey, and you know, I'm, I'm here for, you know, we all can be a hot mess, but you know, you think that, Hey, I can do all these things and not be tainted by it. You know, mm -hmm. I can have this relationship with this person of the opposite sex and I'm good, you know, because I'm self-righteous, I'm overconfident. And then you end up falling. Yeah. Right? So yeah. those boundaries, like you are saying are so important. We know this couple who lived on uh, next door to us who were, um, doing marriage counseling for another couple, right? And then the husband who was actually counseling the other couple ended up marrying the counselee, like the yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, of the other person, you know? So even in that context, you think like, hey, you know, I'm sharing this, you know, <laughs> with this other person, like both of our spouses are here at the time, but, you know, you can still kind of draw those, um, I don't know, these connections with the other per hearing, oh, like, oh, well, this is what this person struggle they're having in their marriage and we're having this struggle in our marriage. Well, you know, you start to kind of, I guess, connect with that and those things happen, but I guess also using discernment, like yeah. even in that. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I don't think that just happened. Like, you know, well, it was you something think to think of Tiffany is the idea. And I think this matters in this conversation is being in the light and being honest and confessing your sin, like confessing at a temptation level, like, you know, and I think being able to really just be like, oh, wait, I had a feeling there. Oh, wait, I, I kind of liked that. Yeah. There, right. Because I kind of liked, yeah. they really listened to me. He yeah. listened to me more than my spouse. Listened. Like, like it could go a lot of places, but if we're able to be in the light and have places where we can have confession, mm -hmm. it is so important to at a temptation level, confess yeah. it. None of that is, you know, who doesn't want attention? Who doesn't yeah. want, you know, that, yeah. you know? And so I think, and, and that idea of comparison too. Yes. You know, these things play into this, but if we can be in the light, mm -hmm. we can be honest and have yes. safe places where we can really talk about those things yes. that we're feeling, I think that's important. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And I think, you know, like you were saying, um, the thought isn't the sin, right? You know, these thoughts come, it's like your reaction to that thought, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, Oh, I want attention. So am I going to poke and get more attention? Am I going to now draw closer to this person so they can continue to give me that attention? Or then am I going to confess that? Because I think, you know, and I believe it's in, Oh, 
Uh, the Bible talks about how, you know, that's the difference between followers of Christ. Those who are walking in the light versus mm -hmm. those who are walking in darkness is that we confess. Like yeah. we have the light of the spirit to let us know like, hey, that's a sin. That's not right. And you confess that. But when you're in walking in darkness, you don't even see it as a sin. You know, right. like, oh, I'm fine. You know, so right. yes, yeah. <laughs> that's important to be in the light. And something we've all said in different ways is having boundaries. And I, um, something a pastor had in a message that I heard had said, boundaries are like having guardrails on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Guardrails are set up so that you don't pop your tire with all the whatever's on the side of the road, but also so that you don't go too far to the left mm -hmm. or to the right. And yeah. so having a conversation with your husband of guardrails in your relationship is really important. And this is what he was actually talking about. So like for him, if he is working with a female, having the door open or having another person in the room with them, like said, but this was because him and his wife sat down and was like, okay, if I'm in this, I'm going to be working with females on my own. What would make you feel comfortable? What yeah. would be a guardrail that we could set up so that it would make you feel comfortable it, so that I can avoid temptation or in the event that's yes. not, he's not walking into the room with the meeting on with the anticipation that I'm going to have some type, type, type of attraction to them. Right. But in the event that I do, let's talk right. about this now. Let's set yep. this up with each other. And same thing. If you're going to go out to lunch with a person because you're in sales or whatever the case may be, like, what can you do? And so yep. I think having those conversations with your husband about the parameters of the relationships that you have with the opposite sex is really important. That way you guys are both on the same page in an agreement so that, because we are, we're going to interact with the opposite. They're yeah. sisters and brothers in Christ. Like we're yeah. not supposed to avoid yeah. them. Yeah. We're having those Absolutely. boundaries or those parameters so that it both the husband and you are feeling respected mm -hmm. in those situations. I think it's really, really important and would be like something I would and I know we've kind of um, talked a lot about, too, about, um, you know, our husband role and like, should he have friends of the opposite sex? <laughs> you know, like we don't want him talking to other women. But I think, you know, as ardent wives, we need to be conscious of our behavior um, when we around um, the opposite sex. Because sometimes, you know, you think that, hey, I'm just being myself, but somebody else may take that as an attraction. Mm -hmm. And the same is <laughs> true. You know, like I'm just being, I just talk to everybody. You know, I'm yeah. genuinely concerned yeah. about what everybody has going on in their life, but somebody can take that, you know, <laughs> you know and to mean something totally different, yeah. you know, so just having this awareness of my own behavior yeah. Yeah. when I'm around the opposite sex. So I'm not sending the wrong signals or mixed right. signals because right. <laughs> we are accountable for that too. Yeah. 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 And it's a, it's a, it's a guard, a guard, but I love that. One of my prayers that I've been praying a lot, don't laugh at me, but I ask God, you know, the, the guardrails that when you're bowling, when you're a kid, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm always like, God, would you put them up around me? You know, because <laughs> Because yeah. I want to walk in that place of safety of just yeah. like, oh, sometimes I don't even see, sometimes I don't even know, mm -hmm. oh, God, would you put up and I'm like the, the things in the, in when we're bowling, you know, I know he knows, but right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need bumpers, bumpers, bumpers Lord, bumpers. bumpers, that's it. You yes. Know? <laughs> and, and live that way where I am like guard your heart for it's yeah. the one yes. spring of life, you know, and um, it's where everything else flows from. And, and so it's wise, that's wisdom, right? Yeah. Wisdom of being able to look at my life, look at my actions, and then also have that conversation. And I love that D just having that conversation with your spouse, you know, have you ever had that conversation with your spouse about how you feel about it in a mature way? And like, yeah. and you know, what, as you're, you're, you know, getting into marriage or young in marriage, or you're notice something, you feel something, and something feels uncomfortable, you know, being able to have those tough conversations, I think are so, so key. Right. And I was listening to this song. There's this new song that talks about you're free, like you're free to do whatever you want to do. And, you know, it talks about <laughs> this, you know, so everybody, I was on this app and it was, um, it was playing this workout app and it was playing. The girl was like, yeah, you're free to do whatever you want to do in this coming year. And, da, 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 da. and so I was reading this book and this book was saying, you know, whatever, everything has a message, whether mm -hmm. it's a TV show, like everything is sending you a message. Mm -hmm. So it is an encouragement to step back and say, well, what message is this sending me? Mm -hmm. So when I was listening to that, the message that I was receiving was that 
I'm free to do whatever I want to do. And that's what's going to make me happy. Mm. You know, it's like happiness comes in being free to do whatever you want to do. And mm. isn't that a message of the world? Yes. Right? Because yes. you freedom is not being able to do what you want. It's being able to choose or choose not. And sometimes when you're exercising this freedom of where I can just do whatever I want to do, you've lost your ability to choose. You're no longer free. Yeah. <laughs> now everything you're is permissible. Not everything is permissible, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Now you're a slave. You yeah. know, so while this way of living is not going to be glamorous to the world, you know, I mean, it's not the message that the world is sending. Um, you want to, you know, guard, like you were saying, guard your heart, guard your mind, um, so that you can flee from those situations, you know, because yeah, you could do whatever you want. That's a possibility, right. <laughs> but where's that going to lead you? Where does, the, where then does that take you? Where does that message take you? So yeah. just having this awareness, you know, like, Hey, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Yes. Right. And so we get to be <laughs> the light and just yeah. remembering that it's not going to look the same. People may be like, oh, you're crazy. That's dumb. That's foolish. And hey, I'm doing it's OK. Yeah. <laughs> right, all right. We're aliens in this world. <laughs> right. right. Listen, I think it's probably like I'll be a fool for Jesus any day. Like, hey, <laughs> sign me up. So if you are new in marriage or been walking in this while, we'd love to hear what yes. you have to say about this. Yes. Um, and if you have guardrails or parameters for relationships, what do you think? Um, can your husband go on trips with their best friend from childhood or have a burger? Like that would be great. We'd love to hear for you yes. to contribute towards the conversation. And I think that would be like a good carryover into the Art and Wise group. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, come over there. You read this. Come over there. Share with us. Create a post. Share with us. Let us know. We would love to hear. Is it okay? As D said, can your husband be out here in Jamaica with his BFF? Or can he be over here at Five Guys eating a burger? Or is it no, ma'am? No, ma'am. We're not doing any of that. Let us know. We want to hear about it. <laughs> so just thank you so much for listening to this episode. Head over to the Art and Wives Facebook group. We would love to hear from you there. Until next time, guard your heart and your marriage. <laughs>